welcome back. I'm super excited because we are starting our first official room makeover in our new house. We have been living in this house for over a year now, but last year we had a newborn baby, our second son was born, and then with the holidays, and then spending most of this year working on our new DIY course, which just launched at the end of the summer. We just haven't had time to do a full makeover in all the projects that go along with it. We've done a few projects here and there in this house, but I'm super excited to do our first full room makeover now, and we are starting with my son's bedroom. So this is my first son's room that I'm in right now, and he's about to turn four. So we're kind of out of the nursery stage, and I had so much fun doing a room makeover for his nursery when he was born. It was super cute, but since we moved into this house, it's just kind of been a hodgepodge of furniture and decor in this space, and it just is not working well for daily living, and I also am not crazy about how everything looks. When we first moved in last year, I really loved this room because it has vaulted ceilings and an arch window, which I thought was really beautiful and made it more unique. It also gets amazing natural light, so it's got all those great things going for it. When we first moved in, the window had a really awful window treatment on it. It had this ugly curtain and those really cheap blinds, so I did take those down immediately, and it also had all carpeting in the entire house including this room so that's one of the first things we have replaced before we moved in so that was about all that we did to this space as far as like makeover stuff goes and for the windows we needed to get some kind of window treatment up so I found some blackout curtains at Target for a low price and I hung them up but <laughs> they are too short and it's been driving me crazy so we definitely need to address the window treatments in here this room makeover is going to be several steps so in this phase one I want to focus on putting some fresh paint on the walls this room has not been painted in like at least 20 years so it really needs some fresh paint and I also want to build a DIY shiplap headboard for my son. We are going to be transitioning him out of a toddler bed that was like a conversion style from his crib and he is going to be going into a full size bed which I'm super excited about and I thought a shiplap headboard would be really cute. And because we're putting shiplap on the headboard I've decided not to do any additional accent wall treatments on the wall. And instead, I want to play around with the paint color and do something fun with that. So I think that's the route we're going to go. But first, we need to pick out paint colors before we can get into all that fun stuff. So for this accent wall, I picked out two dark paint colors, a dark blue, this is Blue Note by Benjamin Moore, and then a dark green, which is Millstone Gray by Benjamin Moore. And for Jackson's nursery, I actually did a lot of blues because I love blue for baby boys, especially like a navy blue. I already have his bookshelves like in shades of blue, so I was like, and his toy box too, so I was like, well, if I incorporate blue in here, then I don't have to repaint those things, and it'll just be easy to do. But I don't know, I really like this dark green, this millstone gray. It's like a dark green gray. I actually have used Blue Note before on an office makeover and it is a gorgeous color, but I'm kind of leaning towards the dark green gray. I've never used this color before, so I think it would be fun to try in here and do something kind of new and different. The overall vibe I'm going for in this room is less baby boy a little more grown up like something that he can use as a toddler but also enjoy as he gets older and I want to just have a really cozy comfortable feeling and this green it's just I'm really loving it so I'm gonna see how it looks with some other paint color samples that I got um, some different white colors for the rest of the wall and then also a couple grays which I'm thinking of doing for the headboard Alright, so I have a bunch of different whites and gray samples up on the wall here, but the lighting's a little weird facing this way, so I think I'm going to try these white and gray colors on this wall over here because the gray's going to be on a headboard which goes on that wall and the white's going to be on all the other walls, but I just 
was trying to see what they looked like with the Molson Gray. Honestly, I think any of them would look beautiful. I do think the White Dove is a little bright for this room since it does get so much sunlight. I love White Dove. I've used it on multiple rooms. But I'm leaning towards this like Swiss coffee which we used on our shiplap wall in our back hall. Or this new white color called Soft Chamois, I think if I'm saying that right. I've been hearing about this color for a long time and I think it's beautiful. And I've kind of been nervous about using it because it's a creamier white, but I think I could get away with it in a brighter room like this. Alright, this is going to be a really tough decision. I love this Swiss coffee and Revere Pewter together. They look beautiful. I don't really like the Revere Pewter and Soft Chamois together. I think they're too close in tone. But the Pajmina and Soft Chamois look beautiful together. So, I don't know. I feel like the Revere Pewter is a very safe color combo. This one, I, I love the warmness of this gray, like, taupey Pajmina color. I just, I don't know if the Soft Chamois is too creamy. I, I've never done this creamy of a white before. So I have no idea how this could turn out, but I think it could be really like cozy in this room. I don't know, I'm leaning towards this, but I do love this combo too. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Brandon and I are starting with clearing out the room in here to prep for painting. Although we won't be able to take out the crib since that has to be taken apart to get out of the door. So we're just gonna cover it with a sheet. We're taking these bookshelves off of the wall as well. As much as I love the colors of these bookshelves, they were painted to match the blue theme that I had used for Jackson's nursery. And I'd like to paint them the gray and green colors to match the accent wall and the headboard. I'll drop the link to Jackson's nursery makeover video so you can see what that whole paint theme looked like. All right, after giving this some thought and asking Brendan his opinion, we are both leaning towards this warmer color palette. I think it's gonna make this bright room just feel really cozy, and these are all new colors that we haven't used before. Everything needs painting in this room, so Brandon is starting with the trim and the closet door, and then moving on to the ceiling. Ceilings are often one of those overlooked things in a room for painting because they're annoying to paint and they don't seem like they're that important. But painting your ceiling can make a room feel so much brighter and taller. It's kind of hard to tell on camera here, but I can't get over the difference between our ceiling before the paint versus with the fresh white paint here. It's looking so much better, especially with these vaulted ceilings where the ceilings really stand out. It's time to start the accent wall and I can't wait to see how this dark color turns out. Brandon is taking care of all of the paint cuts for this. If you saw our bedroom makeover from our last home where we did a black painted accent wall, I shared how Brandon used to work for a painter in college. So that's how he got so fast and precise at doing these types of paint cuts. It saves us a lot of time not having to always use painter's tape. I decided to paint the arch window trim in here. I wasn't sure at first about doing this, but I kind of want the arch to complement the accent wall rather than pop and stand out with white trim on a dark wall color. Hopefully it looks good. Have you ever done this before with painting your window trim the same dark color as your wall? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to take over for the easy rolling part now. I can't believe how much this old paint is soaking up this new paint though. I feel like I'm painting drywall. I'm getting super nervous that we are going to run out of paint here. 
To keep costs lower, I was thinking we would only need one quart of paint for this wall and I didn't want to have to buy an entire gallon of paint because then we would have had a lot left over. It's time for the second coat of paint and this is all of the green paint that we have left now to do for the second coat. Brandon thinks we are going to have enough and he's literally painting what's left of this paint onto the roller here. He's just applying it where we need it for a second coat since we definitely don't have enough to do the entire wall again. This is super nerve wracking. I won't know until the morning if this is definitely going to work because the paint is so dark and I need the morning light to tell if we missed any spots. But now it's time to move on to the rest of the walls in this room. You're super exhausted from painting. We've been trying to get all of this paint finished up today before we have to go pick our kids up from school. So Brandon and I are both knocking out the second coat of paint for the other three walls that we were painting a fresh white. morning we are starting my son's DIY shiplap headboard today and Brandon started with making some of the cuts yesterday but I'm just going to go ahead and finish up the cuts that we need once I have the rest of the cuts finished we can go ahead and start assembling everything together for the plans for this headboard I figured them out on paper first and then Brandon put some of the measurements in SketchUp for me so we can make sure we didn't make any errors with the cuts. But I am kind of figuring it out as I go, especially with the shiplap. Um, so I'll explain that when we get to that point. Although I am calling this a shiplap headboard, I'm actually using a type of wood called V-groove, which it just means that the way that the tongue and groove connects to each board is kind of like a V-shape, whereas actual shiplap boards are more of like a square or rectangular shape. I've never used a V-groove board before, but I've always wanted to, so I'm super excited to use it for this headboard because of the grooves it kind of like isn't a straight board with the measurements so we're going to just lay out these shiplap boards or v-groove boards and put them together and figure out what the exact measurement is of them all together before we cut some furring boards which are going to get nailed into the wood to hold it all together and then we can attach it to the rest of the bed frame boards and this will make a lot more sense when you see it in action but again I'm just kind of making this up as I go and figuring it all out <laughs> okay so Brandon ripped off the top end of this board so this will be the top of the headboard we're just gonna put these together the ship up together to get the exact measurement to cut the furring boards. We're going to cut them and then we're going to add pocket folds to them and then attach it all together. To get this headboard all put together, well, the ship up part, I am just turning the board over so the back faces up, and the back is actually this like beadboard. 
that's how you know it's back. <laughs> so just gonna lay this out and nail it together. Bugs, I keep getting, they keep coming at me. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep adding in the flat. Ooh, that looks so good. Can't wait to put the rest of the bed frame together now. Or headboard. <laughs> I'm putting these really thin wood shims or wood sticks they're about a 16th inch thick underneath of the shiplap so that way the back of my shiplap headboard is going to line up with the 2x4 and then there'll be like a little lip of the 2x4 over the shiplap which I think is gonna look really good it's a small detail but I think it'll look better to line the back of the shiplap and the 2x4 up so that they're totally flush with each other. Alright, we are ready to add the two 4x4s on each side to create the headboard post. And because I want this to have that extra pretty detail in the front, I am placing a half inch thick board under each corner of the ship up headboard so that it's inset a half inch. So now I'm just going to bring the 4x4 posts in and attach them with the half inch inset and I'm going to use a lot of wood glue and two and a half inch grape screws. So I'm making sure I have the ugly side of the 4x4 that's really rough facing towards the back. top of the headboard I want to do a little bit of an overhang on in front of the 4x4s and then also on each side so we needed a custom size board we need a four inch board to do that so Brandon ripped this 2x6 board down for me so we're not gonna need this part anymore but now we have the perfect four inch size for the top of it for this top board we're just gonna glue it and nail it since it's more just like a decorative piece before I install the top trim piece though, I need to go ahead and install the last 2x4 support board at the bottom here. I don't think it totally needs this last support board, but it doesn't hurt to have extra support. It is making this headboard super heavy though, but that's okay. Better to be more sturdy than not. Alright, so I just made a mistake with that last 2x4 support board. I should have inset it a quarter inch because of the rounded edges of the 2x4 up against the rounded edges of the 4x4. 
the 2x4 is sticking out a little bit and this has happened to me before I just forgot and didn't think we needed to bother with insetting it but it'll definitely set better with a bed if they are more flush so gotta fix that and then we can add the top piece Well, it is turning out really beautiful. This is the final build. Now I can prime it and paint it. For priming and painting though, it's definitely going to need a bit of caulking and maybe a few more spots are gonna need wood filler with these rough four by four boards. Oh my gosh, there's like love bugs all over it. <sighs> Ugh, yuck. <laughs> I think I'm gonna prime and paint inside so these bugs are not like all over my Headboard. Anyway, um, yeah, but first gonna caulk it and do a little bit of wood filler and sander, and then I can't wait to see how it's gonna look painted where and really see how the ship lap looks. Good morning. After taking a look at our accent wall in the morning light, I'm happy to say that we're not going to have to buy any more paint for this wall. We got away with just a quart of paint, which is awesome because I don't have any leftover paint and we were able to save money by not having to buy a gallon of paint. I do think the coverage was really great with this paint because we used a higher quality of paint from the Benjamin Moore line. It did cost a little bit more, but it saved us from having to get a whole gallon of paint. I didn't get to painting our headboard this week because we just ran out of time with everything else. So in part two, I'm really excited to finish painting the headboard and setting the bed up, figuring out bedding to really help bring this room together. I also have to figure out our window treatments and then from there, I need to figure out the decor and some other pieces of furniture in the room. So I am trying a new style video here where I'm sharing all of our projects for room makers more in real time instead of having everything just in one video and kind of cramming it in i think it just makes more sense to give you a more realistic picture of what it takes to bring a room makeover together especially with all of these diy projects and things like diy furniture like a headboard it takes a lot of time so i want to be able to show you more of that and i can keep up with things better just by sharing the process in real time so let me know if you like this style of video or if you prefer everything more in just one video, but I figured I'd try this out and see how it goes. With that said, I'm excited to share part two and the next step, so make sure you're following along and subscribe and make sure to turn your notifications on so you don't miss any more of our fun project videos. Thank you so much for watching.